Hi, this is John Hansen again, and welcome to the third in our three-part series of introductory tutorials to Spartan student. And uh, in this uh, tutorial, I'll be working on uh, showing you some tools for uh, displaying and analyzing the results of calculations. So if you kind of look up at the top menu here, uh, we started off learning how to build molecules and look at that. Uh, in the second two video, we looked at how to set up and uh, submit calculations. And in this video, we'll be looking at how to display the results of those uh, calculations. So let's build some molecules. I think what I'm going to do is do a couple uh, C4H8 isomers. And that has one degree of unsaturation, so I'll start with an alkene. And let's put uh, two methyl groups on the same carbon there. I hit my little energy minimize, and there's one of my isomers. Now let's say I want to move the methyl group, instead of being on the 1-1 position, I want to make them you know, on adjacent positions, so I want to move that methyl group over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new molecule, but I'm not going to use my new button right here because if I do that what's going to happen is it's going to put it in a whole different file and since later on I might want to compare the energies of these it's more convenient if I put them together in the same list. So they'll still be separate molecules that I can work on but they'll sort of be in the same list and I can do uh, calculations on all of them at the same time and analyze their results more easily. So to do that I go to file and instead of saying new I say new molecule. It's pretty confusing, They're pretty similar terminology, but let's go new molecule. That molecule went away, and now I'm going to make my next isomer, uh, which is, had a methyl group here, but then I'll move the one over here. That'll be the trans one, uh, so let's go ahead and put that right there. I'll hit my little minimize, so I've got that molecule ready to go. And then let's go to new molecule again, and this time we'll make the cis one. So there it is. I'll put the two methyl groups on the same side of the double bond. Uh, but on adjacent uh, carbon atom. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I have those three molecules. Now, where are those three molecules? Remember, they're in a list. So if I go back to my view, um, you can see that down here is shown this little slider that allows me to go between the different uh, molecules in my list. So there's the first one I made, the second one I made, and the third one I made. And I can look at them and interrogate them individually. But one of the real conveniences here is I can submit a calculation for all of them together. So if I go to Setup, Calculations, we've talked about this in the second video. Um, what I didn't talk about was this little checkbox down here, Global Calculations. If that box is checked, which it normally is by default, what it's going to do is do whatever calculation I do on all the molecules in my list. So all three of those molecules will have this equilibrium geometry, hartree fock 321G, or whatever I select, done to them uh, without my having to submit them as individual jobs. So that's, that's pretty convenient. So let me go ahead and submit that then. It asks for a name. So let's say uh, C4H8 isomers. Okay, and off it goes. It already exists because I did this before. That's fine, and off of it goes doing its calculation. Now, because we're doing a fairly low level uh, 321G, it shouldn't take very long, so hopefully it'll pop back here with our uh, message that it's done. If you're waiting and you want to know what things are happening, you can look under options and monitor. We'll, we'll look at that a little bit later, but it is indeed completed. So there's my calculation. Again, these were equilibrium geometry. It's calculated the energies of each of those. I could go in and, for example, look at the output, like I showed you in the last video for each of those. So for the first molecule, here's the output. It was four steps. It took that many seconds. Here's the energies. If I want to look at the next one, I just click on that, and the window stays open, and there, that one took five steps and six seconds or whatever. And then the third one, you know, there's the energies, and it took four steps and five and a half seconds. So I can easily toggle between them uh, while looking at the output. Uh, even more useful is I can look at their relative energies in a spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do is move this out of the way a little bit and then I'm going to go display spreadsheet. And when I display the spreadsheet it brings up these three molecules indicated here uh, as molecule 1, 2, and 3 and I can even label them so I can say oh that's the you know 1-1 one, one isomer And then I might say, oh, and let's see, that one was, let's see, which one was it? It was the trans isomer, so I can label that. You don't have to do this, but it makes it easier when you're analyzing results to sort of keep track of what's what. Cis isomer. Return. So I've got those labeled, and I can easily move between them just by clicking on them. You see it 
changes the molecule as I go. You can show multiple ones at the same time. So there's the cis and the trans both shown at the same time, or all three of them. It's a little messy. So that's kind of convenient. Uh, but what's really powerful here is now I can add to my spreadsheet lots of properties. Um, for example, the energy. So if I wanted to look at the energy, and now I can choose whatever units I want, uh, kilojoules per mole. Uh, these are heart trees, which are what a lot of computational results come out in normally, electron volts, or I'm a traditionalist. I like the kcal per mole, so I'm going to list it in that, and I'll say OK. And you can see these values have been added to my spreadsheet. They're very large negative numbers because, remember, in a quantum mechanical calculation, this is essentially the energy of taking all the electrons and uh, nuclei from infinite distance and bringing them close together. And there's a lot of good columbic interaction that occurs to lower that energy by a very large amount. You also see that this is intrinsically a problem with computational chemistry is you have very large energies and you're looking at very small differences between them. So it's a, it's a very challenging problem. Okay, so now let's say we wanted to compare the relative energy. Remember these are negative numbers, so the negative larger number is going to be a lower energy. Uh, but it's kind of hard to compare these numbers. I mean, you can see it's, that one's a little bigger, that's a little bigger. So it would be nice if we did them all relative to, let's say, this one is the lowest energy. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to add another column in my spreadsheet, which is relative energy. And when I do that, that one that I had selected is at zero. And then our trans isomer is at essentially 0.5 kcals per mole. And our cis isomer is 2 kcals per mole above that. So... That's a really handy way to sort of see the relative energy. Now, I hope, you know, you would have probably guessed that the trans isomer is going to be more stable than the cis isomer just because of the steric repulsion that you see between those guys in the cis isomer. But you might have been hard-pressed to predict that, in fact, the one where both methyls are on the same carbon is, in fact, the lowest energy isomer of those three compounds. And if you were doing a reaction where, for example, any of those three isomers could be formed and they were in equilibrium, you'd expect that this would be the major one that you would observe. Okay, so that's using the spreadsheet, and there's lots of other things you can add to the spreadsheet. You can play around and look at that, but that's a very convenient tool for you. Now, another thing that you can do is sort of display the properties of the molecule by saying display properties. And normally, if you don't have anything selected, it'll do molecular properties, which have everything from the weight and the volume. Uh, it'll guess the name if it uh, is a simple enough molecule. Uh, here's the energy, again, in heart trees or AUs. Um, there are lots of other information. And here's a useful thing, the dipole moment. So we can see that although this just has carbon and hydrogen, it has a pretty significant dipole, and we can display that dipole. It's running from this direction, plus to minus. It's kind of covered up by that atom there. Um, let's look at the other ones. Uh, Here's my trans isomer. Oh, zero dipole for that one because it's symmetrical. Those dipoles cancel. Uh, but the cis one should have a dipole. There it is, 0.16 divide, and you can see it going that direction. So essentially, it looks like these methyl groups are slightly electron donating relative to the sp2 carbons in the double bond. And so we see a slight dipole there. That's convenient. Uh, this is also context sensitive, so if you select an atom, it'll actually tell you atom properties, and one of the most important is the charge on the atom. So that particular atom, a carbon atom, has a minus 0.17. That carbon atom is a minus uh, 0.32. Um, so you can get information about how the charge is distributed in the molecule over the different atoms. Okay. Those are all sort of uh, useful information. You might also want some structural information. For example, what's the distance between atoms? So these three icons here, which you can also get from the display menu, will tell you things like the distance between atoms, measure distance. This one will tell you measure angle, and this will measure dihedral. So let's just look at those measure distance. Maybe you want to know what the carbon-hydrogen distance is from an sp2 carbon to that hydrogen. If you look down in this corner, 1.1. Uh, angstroms. In an sp3 carbon hydrogen, it's a little bit longer, so let's try that. 1.09 uh, angstroms instead of 1.07, so a little bit longer. Carbon-carbon single bond, about 1.5 angstroms, but a carbon-carbon double bond, a little shorter, 1.3 angstroms. So you can interrogate that. They don't have to be bonded. You can say, how close are those two atoms to each other? 2.1 angstroms. So it's pretty easy to get distances. 
Angles is also useful. You could say, well, what's this angle going to be? Well, it looks like it's an sp2 carbon. should be about 120. Oh, it's a little bigger. It's 127. Why is that? Oh, well, these methyls are kind of pushing on each other, and they're opening up that angle. Uh, this carbon-carbon-hydrogen angle, then, is probably a little smaller, 114. You could compare, let's say, this carbon-carbon-carbon angle of 127 in the cis isomer. In the trans isomer, you would think that might be not quite so big. So let's go look here. Uh, boom. It's like there, there, there. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to select that again. One, two, three. 125. So indeed, it is a little bit bigger than a normal 120, but smaller than the cis one where they were really pushed out. So you can... Uh, do a lot of interrogation. The dihedral angle is a four bond angle. So for example, these four atoms that are bonded together, they look like they're about 180 degrees from each other. If you think of this bond versus that bond. So I can look at the dihedral angle and click on those four. And sure enough, just as we expected, that's exactly 180. The dihedral angle becomes important when you're looking at uh, conformations around single bonds and seeing exactly what the geometry is. So that's kind of getting structural information out, pretty straightforward. And then there's a whole other set of uh, information that's based on uh, surfaces, uh, like electron density surfaces and HOMOs and LUMOs, and we can display those by selecting Display Surfaces. So it brings up a Display Surface me menu, and I can add various surfaces here. So I'm going to go Add. Um, Kind of the simplest one is a density surface. And what that really is, is it's going to pick some value that the program has already picked. You can change that, which will put a, a surface on here at a certain density of electrons, uh, a certain electron density. And this one is chosen so it corresponds pretty closely to the size of the molecule. So to see it, you click on this little checkbox, and it doesn't show it. 